Good afternoon or good morning, everyone, depending on where you're joining. Welcome to today's webinar. Super excited to be here with everyone today, and uh, we certainly appreciate you joining. Uh, my name is JP. I'm the sales team here at Plum Life, here with uh, all your sales and marketing support, and uh, make sure you guys have a great experience and make sure you guys need, have everything you need uh, to use the platform. Um, I'm joined here by Tim. Tim, you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Hey, guys. Uh, Tim Rich, also part of the sales success team. Again, our role is to partner with agents like you help answer any questions along the way and just be your go-to resource to help you protect your clients and grow your book of business in a more effective modern way through Plum. And uh, today's webinar, JP is going to be kicking some ass and it should be a pretty good webinar. Back to you, my friend. Awesome. Thanks, Tim. Yeah, hopefully hopefully I can live up to the billing. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're no super problem. excited to have everybody here. And uh, here, let me go ahead and, uh, and share my screen. While I do that, uh, just a couple of housekeeping notes. Um, we've got a chat box over here on uh, what should be the left-hand side of your screen. And um, feel free to put in your questions there, and uh, myself and Tim will make sure to get uh, to as many as we possibly can, and make sure uh, you know we help we have answer those questions. Um, we'll also go ahead and put in Tim, if you could do that, we'll put in our contact information. That way, everybody can uh, reach out to us directly for any very specific questions, and uh, and then we'll just kind of take it from there. So that being said, Tim, uh, can we see my screen here? Everything look good? Yep, you're good to go. Let's go ahead and get started. So, what are we talking about today? Well, as you can see by the title of today's show, uh, Life Insurance for the Digital Age with Plum Life. So uh, lots to go over. Really, it's going to be uh, divided into four, four main areas, I'd say. Uh, number one, I want to talk about best practices and tools you have uh, right from your uh, Plum platform, right from your portal uh, to help you uh, sell and transact digitally. Uh, we're also going to be talking about social media, uh, why it's important. Everybody should know that. I'm going to back it up with a few statistics I was able to pull, uh, how to get started on social media. And then how to how to create good positive uh, educational content for your for your prospects and for people who are who are out there online. Uh, we're also going to go over other free online resources that are available out there outside of Plum uh, to help you improve your content, but also help you improve your your online presence as a whole and your branding. And then lastly, I'm going to be going over some uh, some scripting, target markets, conversation starters, and uh, that should be a great way to wrap it up. So. But that being said, I'm going to go ahead and jump right in uh, a little bit more on the housekeeping. note. actually make sure you follow us on social media. Uh, we've got a good presence now. We're on LinkedIn as Plum Life. We're on Instagram at Hello Plum Life. Uh, we're on Facebook as well. Make sure you go connect with us there. And then uh, we've got a YouTube channel that actually might have been the first platform we ever had. And we've got a few videos on there now to, uh, from ranging from tutorials on how to use the portal. Uh, and uh, we've just posted for the first time a clip from one of our recent final expense webinars. And uh, what we're going to be doing moving forward now is taking a lot of clips from these webinars and trying to post them onto our YouTube channel uh, as much as we can. That way, you know, we've got some short form content for you uh, to consume, some educational content for you to consume. And that way we're also practicing what we're preaching as far as making sure, uh, you know, we're up to speed posting content. So we've got that. Uh, make sure you connect with us on LinkedIn, too. Uh, I go by JP, but you'll find me on LinkedIn as John Paul Lopez, uh, Tim here as Tim Rich. Make sure you connect with us. We're always posting there too. And then uh, last but not least, I know there's going to be questions on today's webinar about uh, would this be recorded or how can I access this after the fact or where can we see upcoming webinars? Well, now we've got a site entirely dedicated to that. So at the bottom of the screen here, you'll see if you visit helloplum.com slash webinars, uh, you'll have access to all of our recorded webinars from the past, not just today's or last week's, literally going back to uh, about a year ago almost, all right? And then you'll also see upcoming webinars. Just to give you an idea what that looks like, here's the site, helloplum.com slash webinars. Here you'll, see, here, here you'll see the upcoming webinars and descriptions. And then you've got all the past webinars right here for you too, from our final expense one, uh, the couple that we did this year already, product showcase, sales ideas, uh, juvenile whole life, tons of different webinars here for you to have access to, and, uh, and certainly a great resource. All right. So that being said, now let's jump into our content for today's show. So I'm going to go back to the portal here really quick. And the first thing we're going to do is go over some of the resources and some of the tools that you have at your disposal here. Uh, first and foremost, I want to make sure everybody knows how to do the basics. And that's running a quote and sending it out to the client. That's the main digital tool that you've got here, right? So what we'll do is we'll pick a product here. And it's very simple. Just fill out the information. You've got date of birth, term length, coverage amount. I've got an auto fill feature here so that uh, we can move a little bit quicker. Once I've got this filled out, I'm going to go ahead and run this quote. 
couple seconds later, quotes on the screen. What can I do from here? I can change the term length. Premium will, will be modified uh, right away. I can lower the coverage amount if I want to. Premium gets updated right away. Once you've decided on a quote that you and your client are happy with, a couple things you can do. Of course, you can start the application as the agent right here from the portal. But in the name of uh, discussing the tools that you have at your disposal, I want to show you how you can send this quote out to a client and really present them with a nice, clean quoting page uh, and a very nice experience overall. So from here, I'll just fill out the prospect's first name, last name. I'll just put my email address because I want to show you the experience from the client's per uh, perspective. And then from here, I'm going to hit send personalized quote page. And what this is going to do, it's going to send them an email with a preview to their quote, and they can access the quoting page right from there. So here's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to pretend to be the client. I see that I got a notification of an email. I'm going to open my inbox really quick. I see I've got an email from my agent. It looks a little bit cleaner than this in the production environment, just because we're in a stage demo environment. Uh, it's a little, bit, but same applies. So we've got the we've got the preview for the quote. Client will click review my quote, and this is the page that gets brought up on the screen. So this works very well. Basically, all the tools we've got on our seat uh, on our site work very well on a phone screen, on a on any mobile device, iPads, tablets, any smartphone really, and the screen will modify to the device that it's on. So this presents very well across all devices. But here's the main thing. They've got a couple options. Obviously, they can start the application if they see the quote here, if they're happy with it. They can scroll down a little bit, learn a little bit more about Plum Life, our story. They've got frequently asked questions as well. But the other main thing they can do is reach out to you if you have questions, because these links, these pages here are always going to be co-branded. So if they have any questions, they can reach out to you. You can upload a headshot. Could be you, could be the agency logo. Some agents prefer that. Uh, it's got your phone number, your email, and you can personalize this message right here. I'll go ahead and show you, show you how to do that in a little bit. But the main thing is they've got access to you if they have questions. From here, they can just start the application and jump right in uh, and take care of business from there. So that's the main thing I wanted to show you, how to run the quote, how to access the application from the client's perspective. Another thing to note, when you use uh, the quoting tool and send out those pages, it kicks off an automatic nurture campaign. So I get a lot of questions uh, and demos and conversations. If we do any follow-up on behalf of the agent, we absolutely do. So what we do is anytime that you send out a quote or send out the link to your personal plum page, which I'll go over in a minute, what that does is it kicks off this drip or we call it nurture campaign. It's gonna send a series of automated follow-ups, eight over the course of 30 days. The breakdown is five over the first week and then three more over the course of the month. Uh, so we really front load them. And the goal is to help your client take the next step. We want them to open quotes. We want them to start applications. We want them to complete applications, sign applications, submit them, so on and so forth, right? So they're personalized in that we remind them to take the next step. But not only that, these emails are going to come from you as the agent. So for that reason, they land uh, more often in people's primary inboxes versus spam. So the idea is they're very personalized. And the most important thing to know, this feature has resulted in a 38% lift in conversion uh, for clients uh, that start applications all the way to actually submitting them. So a 38% lift that does. So very useful feature uh, and good to know that. Now we know how to run a quote. Let's go over here to this My Plum page section. Main thing to note, My Plum page is basically a, a site that we've built for you for any agent that signs up with us. And it's really a quoting page and uh, a client facing page. So any prospects that have access to this page, they're going to be able to run their own quotes and they're going to be able to start their own applications. So to give you an idea how this works, first thing you want to do is make sure that you've linked the right product. So if you want to embed accelerated term for quoting, then you would leave that there. If you want to use instant term, for example, this might be a good fit right here. So what you'll do is you'll copy this link. Uh, a few things you can do, right? First thing I'm going to do is actually just paste it into a new tab just to show everybody what this, uh, what this page functions as. So there you go. Any client that has access to this, they get to this page, your instant term quote page, and they'll basically fill out the information from here. So I'll go ahead and run some information or fill out the information rather. Hail, let's say living in Alabama, very good health, 100,000 of coverage. Let's say 15 year term client hit see my quote there we go 
1375. This instant term product, for those who are not too familiar with it, I'm not going to go super in detail on products today, but this is important to know, generates an instant decision upon the application. Your client can complete the entire application. They can submit it. Once they do, 30 seconds to a minute later, they'll get an accepted, if they got approved, of course, they'll get an accepted pop-up and they can proceed and pay for the application, put in their bank account, put in their credit card, and get it issued the same day. So this is a great tool to use in combination with this product. We know that clients like to have that Amazon experience, that instant gratification experience. So let's meet them there. So we've done that not only with the product, but also with this tool right here. And of course, if they have questions before starting the application, this page is also co-branded, like I mentioned, so they can reach out to you uh, for further information to set up a meeting. You can even embed your calendar link in this section right here and they can schedule a meeting right from there. So just a ton of resources that you have um, when it comes to uh, the portal itself. A few other things too. You've got this, uh, you, you have access to share this on social media. You've got Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. If you were to click on the LinkedIn logo, for example, what it does, it's gonna merge with your LinkedIn page. It'll probably ask you to log in if you have it. And then it comes up with a draft for a post. So I've clicked on the logo, LinkedIn has popped up. I can click share in a post. There's my LinkedIn page. I can say, click the link below, et cetera, et cetera, and post this on LinkedIn. This page right here, or this image rather, is the link to your Plum page. So as soon as they click that, they get routed to your Plum page, and you know what they can do from there. A couple other tools as well. You've got this email my client section. Uh, we've come up with some copy for you. We have some email templates, uh, and this also generates the nurture campaign that I talked about earlier. Very simple to use. You could pick any of the templates here. I'll go with the first one. That's the subject. So in the subject, you'll see cross life insurance off your list. You can preview this. Again, I mentioned everything fits a phone screen or mobile device very well. This applies as well. Nice and narrow, nice and clean, personalized with their name. Um, and from here, they can click get a quote. Takes them right to that plum page that I mentioned before, right? Uh, and it comes from you, signed by you. It's got your contact information here couple different links where they can get routed to that plum page as well. From there, you'll just fill out client's information and it hits send. Very simple. I'm going to take a pause there, Tim. Any questions uh, that popped up during this time? Yeah, we've got yeah. two yeah. really great really questions. Good. good for the group here. Given um, that the client has the ability to do everything themselves from start to finish, there's the concern of how will the agents know where the clients are at? So specifically, one, uh, when you forward the My Plum page, are agents notified or at what point are they notified that a client is actively filling out the application? And second, can an agent see the follow-up emails that have been sent by Plum in the drip campaign? Where would an agent go to track the communication history? Where would they go to see where the clients are for the application stages? Those are great questions. So uh, let's say a client goes to your Plum page, they move into the application and they start filling it out. Of course, you'll be able to track that. On this application section over here on the left side of the screen, You'll go into here, and as soon as that application pops up and they start filling it out, it's going to get routed to your applications dashboard here. And then you can track the status of it all the way from app start all the way to the policy being issued and placed, right? So I get, think this is a good moment to go over a couple of the tools you have here. Um, so an application will pop up. You would go to the app details. You can even, here, actually, let me pull up a, there we go. So this would be a good idea, or a good example, rather, this first one for Josie Mills, for example, right? App got started, but it's not complete. And let's say this came from my Plum page. I could click on continue application right here, and it's going to take me to the app, and I'll see how far into it uh, this prospect has gotten. Right, so I can see she did. She completed the about you section. She completed the existing covered section, but hasn't gotten further than that. So from here, I have her contact information in the portal, and I can reach out and offer any support. Right, so that's that's the first thing. Uh, the other thing too, is as far as the automated follow-ups, you can certainly track which emails are going out and actually if the prospect is opening and closing them. So what you would do is go to this leads dashboard and whenever you send out a quote or send out the link to the plum page, like I showed, all those leads are going to be saved into here and you'll be able to track communications. So for example, on this first, uh, this first lead, what I would do is click on lead details, hit this communication tab over here. And I can see all the communication history there. If Susan, for example, had opened this quote that I had sent her, 
not only would they this say sent, but right next to it, it would say opens and the number of opens, and then it would say clicks and the number of clicks. So it's important to know how many times they're opening it, but also if they're clicking the link embedded. So in this case, they would be clicking a link to start the application, right? So depending on what type of email has been sent to them, uh, will be a diff there'll be a different link in there. So if you sent them to link to the quote, like I said, you'll see the start app link. If you sent them the link to uh, your plum page, then the link that they click will take them to your plum page where they can run their own quote. So you can track all of that right here. Um, I think that answers your question, right, Tim? It does. You know, I know this is not a product focused um, webinar. And so this will be kind of last question that we touched on. We'll let you kick on and back. Vicky's asking, where does it show which carrier the quote is from? You know, in the communication, does it say which carrier writes the products? Or could you maybe give a quick overview of who writes what products for us? Yeah, sure. So um, remember that when you uh, link to the Plum page in your communications, you pick the product here, right, that you want it to be embedded. So when you go back to your leads dashboard, you can see in the emails which product that is. But just to give a little bit of background on uh, which carriers we've got on the platform, just to run through it really quick, the three term products that we've got, uh, traditional term products, uh, they're all underwritten by SBLI, Savings Bank Life Insurance, okay? Uh, our whole life product is also underwritten by SBLI. Uh, AD and D, accidental death, uh, underwritten by Assurity. And then we've got two great final expense products. We've got a simplified issue product through Aetna. And then we've got a guarantee issue uh, product through AIG. Um, and it's crazy to talk about this because I remember when I started here a little bit uh, around a year ago, we were looking at one or two products and now we've got the whole suite. So it's really awesome to be able to offer this to the clients. They've got a great product suite and then the technology platform to match it, right? So um, that being said, Tim, any other questions? Anything else should go over? No, a couple of questions in the chat that I will respond back to individually. I think we're good to continue on for the purpose of this presentation. Awesome, let's kick on then. So um, here we are. So a couple of last things I wanted to mention about the, the Plum page, right? Um, a couple of quick things that you can do you can copy and paste that link from your portal into your email signature. You can copy and paste it into a text signature. And I didn't even know you could do that. It's actually an agent that brought that to my attention, which, which is super cool. And uh, I know a couple of agents that I've actually had some success uh, pasting the Plum page into their text signature. So you've got those resources. If you've got social media, which we're gonna talk about in a second, I would definitely post that link on social media, not only as individual posts that you do a few times a week, but on social media, you always have an about section or like a bio section on Facebook, right? I would make sure to put that link in the bio section. That way, if anybody visits your profile, there's a, a call to action that's there at all times. So what I would do is I would copy and paste the link into the bio. And then I would also put some messaging there. And I've got a few examples down here. So you could look at click, quote, apply, followed by the link. You could say apply for life insurance and get an instant decision. Right, and make sure you link the instant term personal plum page. Uh, you could also say create your personalized life insurance quote today. Click the link below. You could also say find out how affordable it is to protect your family with life insurance. Click the link below for an instant quote. No hassle, immediate. Those that, that's the type of language that I think consumers look for when it comes to shopping online. Right. So just a few ideas with your personal plum page. Now that we covered that, let's talk about social media a little bit more in depth. And before I get into the what and the how, I think it's important to talk about the why. And I don't wanna to spend too much time here, but it's certainly important. I'll sh I wanna share a few statistics that I was able to pull online. First of all, social media, particularly visual content, increasingly serves as a gateway to product purchases and not just online. A total of 76% of consumers have purchased a product they saw in a brand's social media post. To follow that, 11% of those consumers bought immediately and 44% bought later online. Bought immediately is an important, uh, is, is important to go over uh, because very often with life insurance, you can't purchase immediately. You can apply, but you can't necessarily purchase it right away. You've got to go through underwriting. Fortunately, on our platform, we've got an instant decision product. So for those consumers that are looking to make a decision right away and move forward and get that instant gratification, get coverage placed or issued today, they have that. So it's important to know. 
And then last, lastly, social media is also effective at introducing new products to shoppers. 65% of US consumers say the link in a post led them to a product they weren't originally interested in purchasing. So this is, this is super important when it comes to making sure you have a call to action on all of your social media, your posts, your bios, all of that that I was referring to earlier. The link in a post is huge. Having that link to your personal plum page, I can't state how important this is. People want to be able to go somewhere to learn more, right? Not necessarily to go somewhere to schedule a phone call and go that deep into it, but they need to have a place that they can go find more information. And when it comes to uh, life insurance products, very often that means pricing. So the fact that you have a link where a consumer can go to run their own quote, get an idea for pricing, but also have your information as the agent pasted there so they can take a next step. Can't emphasize how important that is. So just know we as a platform have taken all these statistics into consideration and built a platform around this need, right? So can't emphasize how enough, how, how important social media is. A few more things I want to share with you. Uh, according to surveys, 50% of all respondents say that user generated content would make them more likely to buy products through a brand social channels. So what's user generated content. This would be, uh, you know, everyday people kind of posting videos, uh, promoting a product or giving a, a review of their experience with a product, uh, you know, content generated by an actual human being, right? Not influencer content where you have people with hundreds of thousands of followers posting, and it's more like an ad the more you know your typical user making those uh making those posts so key takeaway there consumers trust user generated content it's authentic helps people envision uh products in their own lives and can be the catalyst that leads to a sale the last thing i want to share with you in this survey they also asked which of the following things would make you more likely to buy a product through a brand's social media channels and there are several responses you could choose one or as many as they wanted and here's, here's what consumers said, 50% uh, would purchase because of UGC images from customers who bought the product. So this goes to the importance of referrals and making sure you know how to use those within the technology, which we'll talk about too. 49% said easy payment system with information already saved. We've got that too in our application process, very easy to get policies placed, very easy to put in banking, bank information, credit cards, even our final expense product, our AIG product social security debit card is an option there too so not to get too much into products but we've considered this as well uh 39 said recommendations from other products and 36 percent said ability to buy directly through social media again goes back to the importance and the power of that personal plum page and being able to link clients directly to the purchasing experience okay now let's talk about how to grow your business using social media we're going to talk about uh, posting content, how to make good content and the importance of having that presence. So, uh, as much as people buy your product and service, they really buy you as an individual, your personality, uh, your charisma and trust and credibility is very important here. So when it comes to social media, that doesn't mean you need to have a ton of followers or hundreds or thousands of likes or comments and anything like that, but to be there and to be consistently there is very important. What does that do? That gives you credibility because you have follow through. You're consistently there. It also shows your expertise if you do it correctly by posting the right type of content. Uh, on top of that, showing your commitment to the field by doing this over a long period of time, right? And this is what consumers wanna see. So now going a little bit more into content, well, what do you have to do? When you post content, it's gotta achieve, uh, I like to say two, at least two out of these three things. Uh, number one, it's gotta be educational. Number two, it's got to be intriguing. And then probably most importantly, you need to have a call to action. If you don't have a call to action, the other two don't matter because the consumers don't know how they can take the next step. All right. So let's talk about uh, some examples um, of how to create content like that. I think the most important platforms, first of all, you've got to be on Instagram, LinkedIn. I think those are the big two. I think most people have a Facebook and we're going to talk about some ways to leverage Facebook and TikTok is making its way up there too. If not, could be one of the most uh, one of the most lucrative platforms from a business perspective. I personally been to a conference last year and spoke to an agent that created a TikTok account, started posting two or three pieces every day, which not most people do, of course. But he started posting a lot of content, and he was able to generate thirty thousand of annual premium in a month 
after two or three months of doing that and verified it's true which was this was incredible not everybody will have that experience but it's the power of virality and these platforms can explode content really quickly so let's talk about posts for social media now remember i said it has to be educational intriguing and have a call to action so i took a post from uh from my linkedin page that make that basically embeds these principles so if you look at the first paragraph there of my post uh working with a financial advisor to assist with your needs is very important research shows that families often grossly underestimate their insurance needs leaving their families exposed that's educational i referenced some research number two it's got to be intriguing right so at plum life we created the ultimate platform that addresses the desire of consumers for professional advice combined with the convenience of a digital buying experience. So now there's a logical progression there. I went from educational, now I'm building some intrigue about the platform. And then lastly, I've got the call to action. Agents, advisors, I encourage you to visit our website to learn more about our story and how we're changing the industry. We're making your life easier and by extension, your clients' lives easier as well. And then a lot of hashtags to improve the visibility of those posts, right? So your content doesn't necessarily have to be broken down in paragraphs that do those three things, but you want to make sure you hit a couple, two out of the three there, right? So you got to be educational and have a call to action or be intriguing and have a call to action. Make sure you follow uh, a template similar to that. All right. Moving on to social listening. You want to be posting a lot of content. You want to have structured content, valuable content, but it's very important as well that you're engaging with other people's content online. You don't want to be just posting, posting, posting. It's the equivalent of talking and talking, talking at the dinner table and not giving time to other people to hear them out and to engage with them. So you want to apply that online too. So we call it social listening. So make sure you engage with your followers and connections. Uh, one great way to do it is creating polls, asking questions, starting discussions. And a lot of times it's kind of a long-term play for your business to really build a brand but you can get short-term results from this too. When I was an agent, I sold for three and a half, four years. And at one point I was getting all of my clients exclusively from social media. And it was using polls, uh, other tools on Facebook, Instagram that helped me do this. Uh, I really love talking about polls and, and how you can structure those. So let's go over a couple of examples here. On Instagram and Facebook, you can create polls, right? Uh, and people can engage. They can be yes or no polls. They can be multiple choice. I won't break that down too into detail today, but feel free to book some time with us or reach out and I'm more than happy to show you how to do it. But these are some of the questions that I would ask on these polls to all of my followers or connections. I would ask things like, did you know that life insurance can also be used to create a tax-free income stream during retirement? Yes or no. If somebody said no, I'd send them a message and maybe schedule some time with them to teach them about it. it could lead to a sale, right? Could also ask, did you know life insurance can also pay out while you're alive? Obviously referring to living benefits or uh, maybe the cash value of a permanent policy, that type of thing, right? Same thing applies, yes or no question. And then lastly, have you ever thought about getting life insurance before? Very simple. If I've got a few people that say yes, I've got a great, now I have a great reason to actually reach out to them directly, send them a message and learn more about it. So really these are uh, kind of, ways to get a foot in the door or a great way to start a conversation, possibly lead to a meeting, possibly lead to a sale, right? I've had uh, a few examples of polls. They're not up here, but I've had polls where I had 30, 40 respondents and that led to five or six sales just from one poll. Spent 15 minutes creating the poll and then over time that led to a lot of business. So certainly worth it to do that. Other free resources. So we talked about some of the resources that you've got on the plum portal, right? The plum page, the quoting, the emails, the nurture campaign, but we definitely encourage you to use some of the resources that uh, you have outside of plum. So I'll give you a few examples here. I've got some pulled up. These are really small on the screen. So remember this is recorded. So you can always go back to this uh, and you can also take a screenshot if you need to right now. Right. But you've got lifehappens.org. And this is a great place to borrow content from. Uh, so if you go over to the website, see this insurance one on one tab, go to uh, you can click life insurance one on one. You've got tons of uh, different resources and different inspirations for content. So why is life insurance worth it? Many answers to the question, uh, brief and to the point, 
And you can basically copy and paste this and put this on your Instagram, put this on your Facebook, followed by the link to your plum page, maybe, or followed by, you know, a call to action, how to contact you for more information. What does life insurance cover? These are basic questions that consumers have very often. So it covers immediate expenses, ongoing expenses, future expenses. Do I need life insurance? Who could benefit uh, in your family from having life insurance, right? Here you go. A bunch of different examples there. Great source of content. And the list goes on and on and on. From the resources that I'm about to share with you, you probably have close to a year's worth of content if you were to structure it out. All right. Another resource you've got is Canva. Canva is great for uh, creating uh, templated posts, uh, design for the website, different stuff like that. So if you go to Canva.com, create an account, they've got free memberships, they've got paid memberships, or you have more resources. I've actually been able to pull up uh, mine that I used as an agent. I want to show you a couple of examples of what I did. So I went to Canva and I created some templated posts. I didn't design this or anything. These were just templates available. I just put a picture and wrote my name and this is what came up literally. So uh, this was a post that I did introducing myself as an agent to all my followers. So I got a headshot on the next page. I've got, what do I do with some bullets there? Uh, I also recruit and train because I had a small team with me and then call to action. Let's have a conversation and see how I can help you right? with all the branding and formatting there. So this took only a few minutes to create, uh, led to some activity. And the uh, point is you can use this as a free resources for your business, right? So moving on, let's go to the insurance marketer. I really like this. Uh, these are very specific uh, blog topics and posts. Um, actually, before I go into this, I want to stop for some questions. I feel like I've been talking a lot. Tim, any any other questions we should go over? You're on a roll, man. I mean, I know you're hitting the marathon right here. Question wise, a lot of product stuff in the chat, a lot of one offs, you know, for the good of the group. I think we'll let you finish the resources that you're kind of going through. And then if there's anything else that pops up, I'll cut you off. Okay. Sounds good. So going back to uh, this resource, the insurance marketer, like I mentioned, very specific blog topics. These are very educational. So what we looked at with Canva was pretty general information about life insurance. This has some very specific information. So for example, why do you need life insurance during a recession? Some people might believe that we're in a recession or heading into a recession. This might be a good time to post something like this, right? Do stay at home parents need life insurance? Why is life insurance important for self-employed? List goes on and on. The eight critical times in life that you need life insurance the most. This is a very, uh, I mean, the, 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 the options are, are almost endless here. So lots of different posts that you can create from here. Let's see what else we got. I like this one in particular, this is leadsurance.com. And the reason I like this one so much is because uh, it's visual content. I mentioned earlier, consumers really appreciate visual content, even if it means it's just a picture with a quote on it or a picture with a statistic on it. For some reason that grabs people attention a little bit more. And here you have templates, examples of that, that you could literally screenshot, share it on your social media. There's even links for people to learn more embedded in here, right? I'd probably replace those links with some of the links that you have for Plum, <laughs> right? But uh, the idea is the same. You've got the this information, it's educational, post it, follow that up with a link to your Plum page, right? So, so those are some of the resources that you've got. Moving back, going back along here, um, Facebook. I can't uh, emphasize how important it is to join groups on Facebook. It goes a little bit into the social listening I was talking about and creating content. So first of all, you've got uh, a good number of Facebook agent only groups, and those are not to solicit, but more to learn, right? So you've got life insurance agents. That's a group with 56,000 members who you can reach out to learn about how they uh, do business online and that sort of thing. You've got professional life insurance agent discussions, 14,000 members, life insurance tips, tricks, closers, 15,000 members. The other thing you can do as well is join groups uh, in your community niche markets, right? I'll show you an example. I've got my Facebook actually pulled up here and I'm based in Orlando. So I joined a group called Orlando business recommendation and jobs and people here, they post stuff that they're selling. They post uh, how their business can help. You can do the same. You can write a post. You can even create a poll right here. So a lot of the things that I'm talking about, you don't, it's not necessarily that they need to be done separately. 
you can actually use a lot of those strategies uh, in unison and combine them. So here I'm on Facebook, I'm in a group and I'm engaging with people by creating a poll, right? So I can talk about life insurance, create a poll, people will respond and then I can send them a message, right? Or ask for permission to send them a message and continue the conversation there, right? So a lot of different things that you can do in combination uh, in regards to some of the stuff I've talked about today. Um, LinkedIn groups, you've also got this one right here, independent life and health insurance agents, more of that agent only type of group, uh, but 41,000 members. People are always engaging there, always posting, and it's a great place to learn. I'm part of the group. Most of our team is in this group as well, and we learn stuff from there all the time. So just lots of great free resources that you have at your disposal. Uh, before I go into target market and basically close off with scripting, any, any questions, Tim? Uh, anything that you thought we should go over? A lot of compliments for your resources that you are showcasing. It's almost like you've got people in here you pay to say nice things about you. But in all seriousness, a um, couple general questions. You know, social media, Facebook versus LinkedIn. Do you use one or the other typically if you're prospecting clients versus looking to you know build COIs and build your network of referrals in that sense? And uh, QR code generators. Do you ever use a QR code for anything like that too? Uh, great point about the QR codes. Um, that actually reminds me of a couple of things. If you wanted to uh, create your own QR code, it's actually very easy. So I'm literally just gonna Google QR code generator and you could use any of the ones that pop up. I think this is the one uh, that we typically share. And you can basically just drop a link in there and it's gonna create your QR code right there. Uh, the other thing that we have too, and this kind of leads to, I'm thinking of talking about a little incentive here. We actually create some personalized flyers. Uh, not, they're not available directly on the portal. The more gener generic flyers are there, but we have the ability to create some personalized flyers. Uh, if you look at some of the marketing materials we have here on the bottom right, uh, for accelerated term, we've got uh, at a glance, we've got the whole life consumer flyer, instant term uh, consumer flyer, even a mortgage protection piece. So a lot of people kind of gloss over this marketing material section. But there's a lot of great stuff there. Point I was trying to get to, uh, for example, with this mortgage protection consumer flyer, what we can do is create a personalized version of this so that at the bottom here can have your logo, your name, your contact information, even your website, even a QR code that takes uh, people to your personal plum page for what, whichever products uh, you want to have it made for. For mortgage protection, maybe instant term would be a good fit there, right? Um, so we do have these resources for you. We can personalize them. If you wanna have that conversation, reach out to us. Uh, you've got our, our contact info in the chat there, and we'll go about seeing how we can get that done for you, right? Um, but certainly a great resource. Um, Tim, there was something else you had mentioned. I can't, I can't remember it right now. Like social media, you know, do you use Facebook, for example, for prospecting clients? Do you use LinkedIn to find realtors for referrals? Do you have any like color in your, from your experience in the field on what you would use different networks for? Yeah, so LinkedIn, um, I really liked using LinkedIn uh, more for just getting, creating connections within the industry. So uh, talking to more agents, joining those groups uh, and really connecting with successful agents and learning from them. That was what I used LinkedIn more for. And uh, I would also use LinkedIn for um, for recruiting purposes. So if I ever wanted to look at expanding my team, because uh, I used to, I was not only a producer, but also building a team, LinkedIn's a good place to do that, of course. I mean, it's for professional networking, right? So why not use that resource? Uh, Facebook was a little bit more, at least in my experience, dedicated towards the client experience. So I mentioned being part of groups in your community, uh, posting, you know, uh, content about life insurance, your services, how you can help, uh, and trying to gain more of uh, more connections in the client uh, sense of things. So to summarize, LinkedIn was more professional and connecting with other agents. And I think Facebook was a great place to go for building a network of clients and building your pipeline. So uh, that's how to answer that. Any, any other questions? No, and I think that's just a really good point that we can end on before moving on. You know, when you're thinking about your content creation, your slide of making it quick, quick, make it effective, make sure it delivers a punch and a call to action. You know, if you're thinking about Facebook, if you're thinking about TikTok and Twitters who are end users who can buy, make sure the messages say, hey, apply, find out what you qualify for. LinkedIn, if you're looking to grow your network, looking to gain referrals from, say, mortgage lenders, from realtors, you know, anyone else that can give you warm leads, 
just something to think about as they're kind of creating those messages. But other than that, JP, I'll turn it back to you and let you keep going. Awesome. So uh, we're not far from wrapping up, everybody. We're going to finish off with some uh, some target market um, type of content. And then we're going to go over a little bit of scripting and then uh, we'll wrap it up. So, so sit tight. We're almost there. Uh, so let's talk about market segments. Um, first of all, sandwich generation. So uh, parents who have kids still at home uh, and also are providing and supporting their own parents. So they're kind of sandwiched in the middle of those two generations, right? Very often, uh, this market might be somewhere maybe in their 30s or even sometimes in their late 20s, for example. And they're really entering a new world of financial responsibility. I mean, their financial responsibilities have probably gone from here and have jumped up big time. So uh, that being said, life insurance becomes very important for them, not only because of the dependence they have, but because they may be uneducated and underserved for that reason that, you know, they're kind of moving on to those financial responsibilities. Uh, so they don't get reached out too often or enough, I would say, by agents. Um, they get looked over. Like I mentioned, they're underserved. It's very important to make sure we, we service and help these families because they've got so much people, so many people depending on them, right? So that's sandwich generation. Moving on to wealth transfer, uh, use potentially tax-free insurance proceeds to leave an inheritance. A lot of uh, people think of life, especially consumers, think of life insurance as only for a final expense, just to cover their burial costs, right? Little do they know that they can afford, or a lot of people can afford much more coverage that they could imagine. I've come across, um, you could run quotes right from your portal uh, for somebody in their late 20s, for example, a sandwich, sandwich generation type of person could be 30 years old. You can get them a million dollars of coverage with an instant term, get it issued in place same day for 50 bucks a month, 60 bucks a month. I mean, I've seen quotes run like that millions of dollars of coverage. Uh, so imagine if you could, with a product like instant term, for example, uh, made it a goal to, let's say in 2023, you want to put in $50 million of coverage into community, into your community, right? That could be a great product to do it with because it's a fast experience. And not only are you uh, helping people with covering their burdens financially, if something were to happen to them, but now you're talking about creating wealth in a community. So you're literally changing your community city, possibly even state, right? If you're able to influence enough people. So this is a huge deal. Uh, business owners. Uh, so we know about uh, a lot of the solutions that we have, uh, buy sell agreements, key person, life insurance. Uh, we can certainly write the, do that type of business with the products that we have. Um, if you go to our underwriting guidelines available on your portal, you can find out more information about, uh, you know, the underwriting guidelines for those specific scenarios and what needs what gets considered in underwriting. So don't forget about business owners, especially that small to mid-sized business, maybe even mom and pop shops have got 10 employees, five employees, that type of thing. Uh, very often they're underserved too. So make sure you reach out to those individuals. Uh, life checkup. This could be basically anybody. It's just an opportunity to have a life insurance discussion. So it could be an existing client that you're going back to for an annual review or a semi-annual review. You could be reaching out to individuals saying, hey, I just want to make sure that uh, haven't been there hasn't been any major life changes. Could be recently got married, had children, purchased a home, took on a lot of debt that they need coverage for, right? So those are all the major life events that prompt the need for life insurance. Doing these life checkups gives you an opportunity to uh, discover those needs in those major life events, right? Uh, moving on to gifting, rather than using retirement assets, leverage life insurance using discounted dollars. Uh, Something that happens very often is people try to save their way and invest their way to retirement, but they very often also try to save their way to leave a legacy behind or uh, save their way to a death benefit, right? And it's a tough task, I think, for anybody, right? So what you have the ability to do is help them with the insurance, help them with the uh, death benefit and legacy part, uh, giving them the ability to purchase life insurance with discounted dollars and give them that peace of mind legacy death benefit is taken care of. I can focus on saving and investing for myself and for my retirement because everything else is taken care of, right? So that's very valuable peace of mind. Uh, final expenses, I think that goes without saying the importance of not leaving behind a burden, uh, regardless of age, regardless of the market that you're looking at. People should be focused on uh, making sure their families don't struggle if anything happens to them, right? And then estate conservation. Um, we see this all the time. 
uh, with uh, high net worth individuals. We've seen this with celebrities as well. Uh, uh, we know Prince, uh, Black Panther, Chadwick Boseman. These are examples of very high net worth people that actually when they passed, they did not leave behind life insurance and they didn't leave behind a will or they didn't have any estate planning. And a lot of us think that these people have everything figured out. They've got all their eggs in order. And for that reason, we don't reach out to them, right? Maybe not your, uh, those examples that I mentioned, but high net worth individuals in our community that we think have everything figured out. We're kind of scared to reach out to them, but we should reach out to them because very often they're underserved because people think they've got it all figured out, right? So always keep this in mind. Let's move on to some conversation starters. And then I think we're good to wrap this up. So, uh, really what I want to focus on is ways that you can bring up the life insurance conversation smoothly, uh, in a no or a little pressure type of way and just really comfortable. Right? So, uh, let's go over some examples as a value client. I want to let you know that I've expanded my services to include a simple way to improve your financial picture by protecting your biggest asset, your present and future income. I wouldn't read it word for word like that, but the idea is maybe you have a client uh, that you're looking to cross sell, right? Maybe they have an auto policy from you or a homeowner's policy from you. You want to reach out to them and say, hey, I know I've taken care of you, but I just recently added life insurance to my services. I just wanted to have that conversation and see if anybody's helped you before, All right? Uh, what else do we have? I love this middle one right here. Who takes care of your life insurance today? The reason I love this, obviously, it's short, simple, to the point, and very often that's the most effective way to, to do it. But you have to pay attention to the language here. Instead of asking, does anybody take care of your life insurance today, which is just a yes or no question, somebody could say yes, and you're kind of done from there. You, you ask the question, who takes care of your life insurance? And by doing that, you build in the assumption that having somebody take care of your life insurance is very important. So if that person doesn't have anybody taking care of their life insurance, now they're thinking, maybe I should get this done. And then you can build the conversation from there, right? So pay attention to the language and some of the scripting. Uh, what else do you got? When was the last time someone did a life insurance review with you to make sure you have the coverage you need? This is a great one to ask. When's the last time you got your life insurance checked? Or when's the last time you had a life insurance review? This uh, is actually a good, this kind of goes hand in hand with some of the objections that you might see out there. Somebody might say, oh, I already have life insurance or I already have a life insurance agent. I have it taken care of. You could follow up by saying, well, when's the last time you had it reviewed? Has anything changed in your life since then? Do, are you sure that you have the right amount of life insurance? That's a very powerful follow-up question, right? So that's how you would address that. A couple more here. Uh, I'd like to send you a life insurance quote for your consideration. If you already have life insurance, we can compare and make sure the amount is right and see if we can lower your premiums. So now you're kind of overcoming the objection before it even uh, gets brought up by the consumer, right? And another way to kind of frame this, if somebody tells you they already have life insurance, here's something that you can say. You could say something along the lines of, hey, that's great. I'm really happy you have life insurance. Um, let me ask you a question though. If we could get you the same amount of coverage you have for a lower premium, or if we could get more coverage for what you're currently paying, would either of those scenarios be of interest to you? That's a very powerful follow-up question. So I'll say it again. That's great that you have life insurance. Um, let me ask you a question. If I could get you more coverage for the same premium or uh, get you their same coverage for a lower premium, would either of those situations interest you, right? Most of, most of the time they'll say, yeah, I wanna raise my coverage and pay the same or I wanna pay less for what I have, okay? Uh, there you go. It's actually on the screen. I didn't even realize it was there. So take a screenshot of this, uh, take a screenshot of any of the slides we've got here or follow up with us, uh, to further discussion. So a couple more, uh, do you currently have ways to financially protect your family in the event of your passing? Very simple, very to the point. And then last but not least, have you ever thought about the fact that we insure our phone, our car, our home, and even our health based on what might happen, but we don't protect the one thing that pays for all those things which is ourselves, our income, our lives, right? So that's a very, you know, it's an intriguing way to bring up the, the life insurance conversation. Got a couple more here. Uh, got some time to go over, so let's do it. I like these because these kind of remove the pressure from the conversation. So this might be of great use to a newer agent, let's say, 
which I'm sure there's a few of you on the call here. I think these are two great ways to bring up the life insurance conversation. Uh, number one, you could just say, hey, look, I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't at least let you know the type of work I'm doing uh, with people and uh, talking about shoring up your plans, making sure you can leave a legacy behind. Look, I wouldn't feel comfortable if I at least didn't bring it up and let you know that's what I do, All right? So that might be good for, you know, when you're talking to friends, relatives, uh, those types of individuals. You could also say, hey, look, uh, I really value your opinion and your feedback. I just want to show you uh, how I'm helping families get protected. That way, if you know anybody who could benefit from that type of thing, you can send them my way. Sometimes the best way to get to a person is to actually frame it as going around them and they end up being interested, right? So, hey, I value your opinion, I value your feedback. Love to show you how I'm helping families get protected. If you know anybody who can benefit, maybe you can send them my way. Sounds fair enough. When can I borrow a half hour of your time? And then kind of move uh, the conversation from there. Here we go. I feel like I've thrown a ton of information to everybody today. So I'm going to wrap it up with a few quick things that you can do uh, today, right after. We always talk about the rule of 72, right? Make sure you take action 72 hours after learning this information. So five steps. Number one, if you don't have those social pages or social media pages, create them. Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, get on those platforms. Let me help you. Let me help you create the platforms or the accounts. Let me help you come up with content. Number two, develop a content calendar. You could take, let's say a Monday morning or a Sunday evening, whatever you like, take an hour of your time and just build out what you're going to post for the week. Could be two or three pieces. This could take maybe 30 minutes to an hour. And then you've got your week taken care of as far as content, right? So this makes life a lot easier. Goes in hand in hand with uh, step three, schedule time for digital selling. Number four, leverage the free resources. Uh, Tim's posted the links in the chat here. So you've got those saved. You've got the web webinar recording and you've got the uh, the webinar site that I shared with you. So you have all those free resources. And then last but not least, make sure you follow up with your clients. We've talked about scripting. We've talked about target markets. And then you know when that, you, that when you send out quotes and the link to your plum page, that we have those nurture campaigns set up. We've got those uh, automated follow-ups for you so you can focus on getting new business in the door. All right. I think that's everything we've got. Tim, any any last questions, anything else that you'd want to share before we before we wrap it up? No, uh, JP, I mean, you did an incredible job. Uh, chat was hopping the whole time. A lot of great questions, a lot of great feedback, great reviews for you. Heartfelt thank you to the agents on the call today. We really do appreciate your time. We know it's valuable. We love these learning sessions. You know, feedback is important. We did just post a poll. Please be honest. If you think this was garbage, you can let us know if you thought this was great. We appreciate the feedback. Anything we can do to make your life easier and make it better, that's what we're here for. JP, final words? Awesome, Tim. Uh, yeah, last thing, um, looking ahead at next week's uh, show that we're going to have put on for you guys, uh, we're going to be talking about final expense plans. So we've got, remember, we've got the simplified issue plan through Aetna. We've got the guaranteed issue plan through AIG. We're going to be talking about uh, how to position those with your clients which would be the best fit for your client and uh, a little bit of a run through of product details and quoting on the site. So uh, that's next week. Again, we're doing these every Thursday, 2 p.m. Eastern time. And uh, remember to get access to all of our upcoming webinars and all of our webinar recordings, go to helloplum.com slash webinars and uh, you'll have access to all that. But that being said, everybody, thank you so much for your time. Uh, big thank you from Tim and myself and the team here at Plum. And uh, we'll see you very soon. Take care. Everyone.